So hello and welcome back. So in this video we will talk about a another problem which is well a simple problem but then you can use you can essentially learn we can learn different um, concepts in the context of this problem. And then the problem is that we have the Raman's shop so there is there is different objects or items that Raman sells in his shop meaning apples oranges or these are fruits and then there is other items like combs and toothbrushes pencils notebooks soap cakes and things like that now i'm not sure what what soap cake is but whatever that is it's let's take it as an object okay so you see that the price for apples is 40 rupees per kilo the price for oranges is, is 30 rupees per kilo so that is essentially the price is per kilo right meaning 40 rupees per kilo mean, meaning per one kilo meaning 40 rupees for one kilo right or oranges 30 rupees per kilo per kilo per, or per kg that means essentially 30 rupees for one kg 60 rupees for two kgs um, three times 30 which is 90 rupees per three for three kilos and so on and so forth right but then the items essentially 3 rupees for one 10 rupees for one meaning for one item you have you have to pay 3 rupees 10 rupees 1 rupee and so on and so forth right and then um, we have um, basically the sales during the last year which means that the items essentially that have been sold during the last year have been listed for example 2457 kilograms of apples 3,004 kilograms of oranges, 22,760 combs, 25,367 toothbrushes, and so on and so forth, right? Now, what we want to do here, the first part of this question, can you find the total weight of apples and oranges Raman sold last year? The total weight of, of apples and oranges. So the total weight of apples and oranges would be, so you have the word total, total weight of apples and oranges. When we talk about essentially total, when, when, when we have the word total here, what that means is that you want to add things up in order to get the total. Meaning, for example, you had 5 kilos here, 10 kilos there, 6 kilos there, and then you want to know what is the total, for example, weight of that of that thing that you sold for example then of course you have to um, you have to add things up so that means that this is a this is essentially here you would you you would use basically um, you would use essentially addition right so then over here you see that um, over here you see that basically you see that over here basically you have the total the, the weight the weight for essentially for apples is 2457 kilograms the weight for oranges was 3004 kilograms so if you add these up that would be basically the total weight for for the apples and oranges right which means that essentially what that means is that for example the weight of apples was 2400 2400 not easy to write with this 57 kilograms right let me write using some essentially my own pen this is not working properly so so essentially then the, the weight of apples the weight of apples is is, is reported to be for example 2457 kilograms the weight of oranges is said to be for example 3004 kilograms now the total weight of apples and oranges 
is equal to the weight of apples and oranges, take this as 1, take this as 2, would be the weight of apples, which would be 1, plus the weight of oranges, take this as 2, and that is the same thing as 2,457 kilograms plus 3,004 kilograms, right? And that is, if you add that, if you essentially do the addition, 2, 4, 5, 7, plus, and both are kilograms and kilograms, so you can add them together. And 3,004, add them together, that's an 11, 1, that's a 6, that's a 4, and that's a 5. So that is basically 5,461 kilograms, right? Now, Um, and then, of course, um, then, of course, if you were to write everything completely properly based on the NCERT system in an examination, then you would have to write, for example, write down here, actually, that the total weight of, for example, apples and oranges is equal to so many kilograms and full stop. So that's how you would write this properly, okay? In some cases, it's actually very helpful, meaning that, for example, when you get to um, when you get to geometry, especially when you get to geometry, if you write things down, in some in many cases, it's going to help you a lot to understand the problem. And once you have understood the problem, of course, then you know the solution already, right? Now, the second part of this question is, can you find the total money Rahman got by selling apples? So, the, the total money Rahman got by selling apples. So, the total money by essentially selling, by selling apples, for example. So, how, how, how do I, how do, how do I, find that out so i know that basically rahman the the unit price essentially the, the price for the apples was was basically this is rupees this is rupees 40 rupees per kg and essentially the apples the apples sold was basically 2,457 kilograms, right? So it was 2,457 kilograms, and the apples essentially, and the and the unit price was was basically was 40 rupees per kilo, right? So here you can use um, in order to know essentially to how to solve the problem, you can again use the pro use proportions, right? Meaning that uh, and proportions, essentially, you, you need to know essentially where to use it, where not to use it. Wherever and whenever things are proportionate, you can use proportions. And by proportion, I mean essentially this thing here, meaning something to something is the same thing as something else to something else, right? So you need to know where to use it. Wherever things are proportional, you can use, of course, proportions. And here, essentially, the situation is such that things are actually proportional, meaning that the apples, the, the unit price is 40 rupees per kilo, meaning for 1 kilo, 40 rupees, for 2 kilos, 2 times 40 rupees, for 3 kilos, 3 times 40. And so this is essentially proportion, meaning the price would grow proportionally with the with essentially with the with the weight basically the higher the weight the higher the price the lower the weight the lower the price right or essentially the the higher the essentially the higher the weight the the higher the cost and the lower the weight the lower the cost right because the price doesn't doesn't change the price remains always 40 rupees per kilo but the cost is going to change, right? The cost meaning essentially the amount of money that you actually end up paying for whatever it is that you buy, right? So now, so essentially since the situation is, 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 
essentially a, a situation in which you can actually use proportions then of course I'm going to use proportions because otherwise I wouldn't know how to set up my multiplication or division how to write it I I just simply I mean frankly I don't really know how to do that but when when it, when when I set up the proportion then the then the multiplication and division comes automatically right so uh, so then how do I set up my proportion I know that the apple costs essentially 40 rupees per kilo so that is 40 40 rupees for one kilo of course I'm going to write the rupees so that is 40 rupees for one kilogram right is the same thing as essentially now how, what was the the amount of the apples that was that that, that was sold that was 2000 that was 2457 kilos 2x right which is of course not right so this proportion this this proport this proportion essentially i set it up wrong on purpose to just show you that that's essentially not the way to set it up and you need to be careful with where to where to where to put things when when you set up proportion you see over here in this side of the proportion i have written 40 rupees to one kilo right and then over here i've written basically i've written the kilo on the top but then over here the kilo is is written on the bottom so this doesn't work right it's just the same thing as saying for example two apples to five oranges is the same thing as how many apples to for example 60 oranges when you put the apples on the top on the other side you have to put the apples on the top and and if you put the apples on the bottom from the beginning then on the other side you have to put the apple again on the bottom but it, then it's up to you where you want to put the apple you could put it on the top or you could put it on the bottom but from the very beginning you have to decide right so here i have written 40 rupees per one kilo is the same as how many kilos per watt which is not right so i have to write this as I have to write this as 40 rupees per one kilo and then that's 2457 kilo and then here what meaning x so and the meaning of this is essentially 40 rupees per one kilo is what to 2457 kilos right so that's the meaning of what I have written and now it's okay I mean it is correct then I'm going to calculate simply so x is the same thing as basically um, and of course about the units if you set up your proportions correctly then you don't have to bother about the units you could just simply write the numbers right meaning that you see over here I have rupees here I have kilograms here so here I have again kilograms so here I, I need to end up with rupees again right i need to end i will end up with with rupees again so then i don't have to bother about the units really meaning that i could write my x is the same thing as this times this divided by this meaning that this over here is right across x so i write it in the denominator or you could use essentially logic the way that I showed you before. So that is a 1, right? And I don't have to write the unit. And I will show you essentially why it's, 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 it's okay. And then over here I have essentially this and this, which are across from one another. You have to put them here in the numerator, multiplied together. So that's 40 times 2, 4, 5, 7, right? So the answer is actually this number, whatever that is, in rupees. That is this number in rupees, right? Now let's, um, so the answer is 40 times basically 2457 in rupees. 
now let's set up the the proportions essentially let's now write the answer using the units right so using the units what i would write i would write my x is the same thing as basically again this which is across from the x goes to the denominator which is one kilogram and these two which are across from one another they go to the numerator essentially multiply together so that's 40 rupees times two four five seven kilograms right and you see over here that kilogram and kilogram will cancel out and what remains is the rupees and so the calculation becomes 40 times two four five seven in rupees right again the same thing so this essentially shows you that if you set up the units right then you don't have to bother about your uh, your your calculation i mean bother about the units whereas if now suppose that i do things wrong meaning that i'm not i'm not careful about what i'm doing and i do things wrong meaning that i i do i set up the proportion this way so the apples are 40 rupees per kilo so that's 40 rupees per one kilo is the same thing as now I'm going to write 2457 kilo in the numerator which is actually supposed to be written in the denominator and then put the x over here now if I if I do my cat my essentially um, if I do my essentially if I do my calculation x would be the same thing as for example let's multiply these two together in the numerator so that's one kilo times two four five seven kilo over 40 rupees right and you see that now this essentially kilo times kilo becomes kilo squared kilo squared per rupees so then this becomes essentially the answer becomes two four five seven divided by 40 and then the unit becomes kilogram squared per rupees which is essentially it's not wrong or anything it's just not what i'm looking for meaning that using this i cannot do anything i'm looking for actually the rupees meaning the price right so of course this way of setting up things are is not is not correct right so now so now essentially this way um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up my proportion correctly. I'm going to write 40 rupees per one kilo is the same thing as and then the kilo two four five seven kilogram, and then put my x over here. And as we calculated, x x is the same thing as this thing over here, right? So that's essentially all about that. Now, the next part of this question so this is the this is can you find the total money raman got by selling apples can you find the total money raman got by se by selling apples and oranges together so then you have to calculate essentially the total money raman got by selling apples as we did before and then separately you have to calculate the total money that that the, essentially the, the amount of money that raman got by selling oranges separately then you will end up with so many rupees for apples so many rupees for oranges add them together that becomes the total money that raman got by selling apples and oranges together right so that's essentially that and then the next part of this question is make a table showing how much money raman received from selling each item and uh, so arrange the entries of amount of money received in descending order find that the item which brought him the highest amount how much is is this item how much in is this item okay so the question is you want to make a table showing how much money how much money raman received from selling each item from selling each item essentially for example then you have to calculate how much Raman received from selling so many kilograms of apples based on the price as we did before how much he got by 
essentially selling is by selling essentially so many kilograms of oranges based on the price as we did before how much money did he get by selling for example combs or toothbrushes or pencils or notebooks based on the unit price i will do one of them to show you essentially how to to do each and every one of these and then um and then of course all of those um, all of those 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 essentially each and every one of them you have to calculate separately and then put them in a table that he got so much for selling so so essentially uh, let me show you essentially how, how to do this so basically for example let's say that let's say that for example let me show you first essentially how for example the the the, the, the unit price for toothbrushes for toothbrushes the unit price is 10 rupees for one for one and then he sold essentially the number of the number of tooth brushes sold was for example 25,367 this is just one example right now if basically if the toothbrush is is is, is essentially worth 10 rupees per for one toothbrush then how much and and then if the number of toothbrushes sold was 25,367 then the total amount of money received received by selling essentially by selling for example toothbrushes is equal to essentially the unit price for the toothbrush the unit price for the toothbrush times the number of the toothbrushes sold and if you don't i mean if you are logically don't understand why i'm setting up this you can again use proportions meaning that you could say that for example the toothbrush is is, is going to cost for example 10 rupees per one toothbrush right now if he sold basically 25,367 toothbrushes, then how much money did he get? And if you set up X here, X would be the same thing as this times this. So that would be, for example, 10 rupees times 25,367 toothbrushes divided by 10 rupees. Divided by 10 rupees. So then rupees and rupees will, will, will cancel out. You have essentially um, no, excuse me. We had we made a mistake. So you have to multiply basically this by this. So that's 10 rupees times 25,367 toothbrushes divided by this number, which is essentially, and of course I have to I have to make corrections here. I, I apologize for this. That's uh, 10 rupees divided by one toothbrush, right? And then toothbrush and toothbrush you can cancel out. So then essentially the the um, the calculation becomes 10 times 25,367 rupees, right? Which is essentially nothing but the nothing but the number of the toothbrushes that were sold times the times the unit price um, so that's essentially that's essentially the the number of the toothbrushes sold that's 25367 times basically rupees 10 which is the same thing as 253670 times 10 in rupees of course, rupees, you're supposed to write it before the number, meaning you actually have to write this as, you have to write this as rupees 25,367, meaning 
2,000, and of course, if you do the multiplication, you can see that basically you have you have the unit price is the 10 rupees for one toothbrush. So that's that's essentially 10 rupees. I, rupees you can write it this way as well. Per essentially per per essentially per toothbrush per one toothbrush, right? Multiply this by essentially by twenty five thousand three hundred sixty seven twenty five thousand three hundred sixty seven toothbrushes right so you can you can imagine that this is the that essentially this part is is the numerator of course so there is multiplication sign here this you can take it as the numerator and imagine that this is there is a one here and then this is 10 rupees per one toothbrush so i can write this as basically 10 rupees per basically one toothbrush and now you can see that toothbrush and toothbrush will cancel out this becomes basically 10 rupees times this number which is 25367 times a 10 which add a zero here and then rupees here so that's 253,670 rupees okay and then once you essentially then you have to do the same thing meaning that the money that the amount of the money received for selling this item and this item and all of these items you have to do them separately and then of course put them in the table meaning that in a table you, you have to Tab tabulate essentially the that for example he's he received so much money for so many kilograms of apples so much money for so many kilograms of oranges so much money for so many toothbrushes so many pencils so many notebooks and so on and so forth and then of course once you have all of the all of the amounts of money received for each item then of course you can you can um, sort them in a descending order for example you can do that you already know how to do that and then of course the price which was essentially the the the, the price among all of the prices there there must be some price which is um, the essentially which is the largest number so that largest number is going to be the answer for this part find the item which brought him the highest amount and then how much that is you already know of course right so that's essentially this problem. I just wanted to show you um, a couple of, essentially a couple of, uh, I mean, the, the the concepts are important here, how you work with the numbers, how you set things up and so on and so forth. So I hope that this video was um, helpful. I'll see you in the next video and thank you.